right? God is in control. So this um, virus is not bigger than our Lord. And so if God is in control and this virus looks like it's spreading out of control, then that means that he is allowing it, right? So he's allowing it for a reason. So what is the reason that God is allowing this this virus to go crazy that's impacting every part of our lives? I don't know. I didn't realize what was going on until I went to the grocery store to buy groceries the other day, and there was nothing in the grocery store, and that kind of just made me realize um, – you know, kind of the extent of it. And then, um, you know, I decided I better buy some groceries because actually I had been eating out all the food out of my cupboards <laughs> because I didn't want it to go bad. And so my cupboards were actually bare. So I was working hard just to get some food in there just for whatever reason, just in case. So the Lord is in control. He's allowing this. So we have to look um what can I, what can I learn from this? Of course, we always want to look at what we can learn, and and I, you know, he's going to grow us first of all in our walk with him because we've got to turn to him in the midst of this. He is our hope, and that's where our help comes from is from the Lord. But we can also be a hope to those who we come in contact with and those around us. This is our opportunity to really shine. When it's dark, we get the opportunity to shine. When everything is great and we say we love the Lord and life is great, that doesn't mean as much as when it's dark and when everything is falling apart and everything is crumbling around us and we can say, God is great and I trust my Lord and I trust in him. Whether I get the coronavirus or not, I trust in the Lord. And if I get it, then I'm supposed to get it. And if I don't, then I don't. And so this is where we have to just hold on, holding on by faith. We say that we have faith, but we want to live by sight, don't we? We, we want to see. We want to know, God, I don't understand. I don't know why this happened. I don't know why that happened. That's living by sight. That's the world. We have to live by faith. We have to live by faith in these times. And we don't know what tomorrow brings, but we know who our God is. And so we have to be more than ever before in the word and encouraging our fellow um, sisters in the Lord to, to stay in the word, to stay holding on to the truth, to stay holding on to what we know to be true for sure. I was reading uh, this morning, I've been going through a book on prayer and fasting, and I didn't know what to do this morning, and I just opened it up, and I read a passage, you can read it later, it's in Ezekiel chapter 22, um, starting in verse 23, and it says, and the word of the Lord came to me, saying, son of man, say to her, Israel, you are a land that is not cleansed or rained on in the day of indignation. And it talks about the prophets, that they are in her midst like a roaring lion, tearing prey. This is the prophets, devouring lives, taking treasure. The priests have done violently to my law. They have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction between the holy and profane. They have not taught the difference between the unclean and the clean. They hide their eyes from Sabbath. I am profaned among them. And her princes within her are like wolves tearing the prey by shedding blood and destroying lives in order to get dishonest gain. Her prophets um, are saying things that, um, it says, her prophets smear whitewash for them, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, thus says the Lord when the Lord has not spoken. Starting in verse 29, the people of the land have practiced oppression and committed robbery. They have wronged the poor and needy and have oppressed the sojourner without justice. Verse 30, I have searched for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the land so that I would not destroy it, but I have found none. Thus, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their ways I have brought upon their heads, declares the Lord. And you go back to verse 30, it says, I've searched for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap for me for the land so that I would not destroy it, but I found none. And we can stand in the gap is my hope for us. This is such a picture of our land today. If you really take time to look at just everyone is out for their own gain to get whatever they can, just taking advantage of any person that they can. But I've searched for someone who would stand in the gap for me. And we can stand in the gap with prayer 
and with fasting. And I know fasting is like a really unpopular word, but it's denying your flesh. And God works through fasting in whatever way that you want to fast. Just even if you just skip one meal and you pray during that time, your stomach is growling and it's hungry and it's reminding you of your need for God and you're taking that time and you're focusing on him. And so my exhortation to us this morning is that we need to be women who will stand in the gap for, uh, for our neighbors, for our family, for our nation, that our nation would turn back to the Lord. I've also been reading in Exodus all the plagues. God did all of those plagues. He was trying to get the attention to move the people to where he wanted them to be. He's allowing this. He is doing something through this. We don't know what it is, but we, as the church and as women of the Lord, we need to stand in the gap and we need to pray right now for our country, for our neighbors, for our nation, that we would turn back to the Lord. And in our own lives personally, if there's areas where we've kind of just gotten complacent and comfortable and kind of just let things go and just said, you know, everything is is okay. We need to repent of those things to the Lord and get right in whatever those areas are and keep our eyes on the Lord and to be those shining lights for our country. Our country needs us now more than ever before. I would say not even our country, right? The whole world. And so as believers, if we can stand up and pray at this time, God will use us to make a difference for such a time as this. So let me let me pray. Lord, we thank you that we can trust you. We thank you that you are in control. We thank you that we can rest in you. And Lord, we we want to first of all, Lord, repent of any areas in our own lives right now, Lord, that we have just kind of let go things that have maybe crept in, Lord. We ask for your forgiveness now, Lord. We ask for your forgiveness upon this land and our country and the sins of our land, Lord, and the sins of the world, God. Lord, you came to this world because you loved us, because you wanted fellowship, and yet there is such a blatant uh, rejection of you. God, would you move in the hearts and the lives of people all across this world, Lord, to come to you, to come back to you, to turn their faces, Lord, to you. God, would you use us to stand in the gap for such a time as this, Lord? Would you move on our hearts, Lord? Lord, give us that courage to try to spend a little bit of time denying our flesh, Lord, fasting, on behalf of this land and of this country and of this world, Lord. God, we know that you will stop the coronavirus whenever it is that you deem to stop it, Lord. But our hearts are that during this time, that lives would be permanently changed for you and towards you. Lord, that you would do a lasting work of redemption, God. So, Lord, use us, God. Use your daughters. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.